Try to imagine yourself as the protagonist in a fiction in which your patient who undergoes a surgery. But they take you to the wrong surgery room, and you wake up entrapped in the body resembling the appearance of another sex. You still feel the same about yourself and define yourself just the way you did prior to the operation, but your anatomy has nothing to do with this anymore. Imagine how it must feel for transgender people living everyday life waiting for the surgery. How would you approach your family, your friends, your boss, or even the shopkeeper that you get your groceries from? How would you feel if your child was involved, and how would you react? There are around half percent of people worldwide estimated to suffer from gender dysphoria. That would make way over one million trans adults in the United States only. And what if I tell you that gender dysphoria is the only psychiatric condition which can be treated by the surgery? and that the adequate surgical care can reduce over 40% of suicidal ideation experienced by transgender people prior to the operation. My name is Dr. Richard Fokin, and I'm a plastic surgeon. I dedicate a significant amount of my clinical practice to gender-affirming surgery. I've been practicing in Bangkok for some time, and I was the one of the first who brought a Thai vaginoplasty surgical technique back to Europe. Why do you do it? It's a complex reconstructive surgery, and successful outcome can be extremely rewarding, as patients are very grateful. However, my primary objective is not to feminize the face or enhance the breast or perform um, a aesthetically and functionally authentic vagina. My chief objective is to improve the quality of life by contributing to the healing of gender dysphoria and, in some cases, save lives by preventing a suicide. Let me tell you a touching story. A couple of years ago, I operated on a young patient. She was 19 years old. Her name was Anna. And I remember Anna particularly well because she had several suicide attempts before she came and see me. She was spending most of her time in a closed ward of a psychiatric hospital, being treated for gender dysphoria, severe depression, anxiety attacks, and so on. And the only person whom she had supporting her in her life and her fight, was her mother. After successful operations and necessary follow-ups, I lost touch with her. But her mother came to see me a couple of months ago because she required a static procedure on her face, and she was telling me that her daughter successfully finished her studies, she has a job, she pays her bills, and she's getting married next month. So the surgery could convert someone who was suicidal into an active and happy person merely by, etching, uh, by matching her appearance with her self-perception. Around a month ago, I made a trip to Dublin, and I, made, I met for lunch with another trans woman patient of mine. Her name was Lily. And Lily's wife was telling me that for the occasion of Lily's birthday, she organized a surprise trip to Berlin. And what they enjoyed the most was swimming in a hotel pool. Because that was the first time in over 20 years that Lily put on a swimming costume. Because that was the first time in over 20 years that she actually swam. And there are many more stories like this. I usually get cards and messages from my patients one year after the operation, reminding me of their first birthdays and updating me about their lives. Many people ask me if I meet many regretters. I haven't met a single one. Patients are still generally required to present a clearing by a psychiatrist or psychologist prior to this irreversible surgery. And the idea behind this is not to confirm or exclude the diagnosis of gender dysphoria, as there is no person or tool in the world which can do so. However, the idea behind this is to exclude any other relevant conditions or diagnosis, like schizophrenia, which can mimic or influence the decision-taking process. The, we hear a lot lately about transgender debate, but I think very few people can actually imagine what these patients, what kind of stress they go through. And I don't know the entire story either, but I would like to share with you some of my medical perspectives and impact my work has on my patients. 
there's been a significant improvement in medical and surgical care for transgender patients. The social acceptance is on the rise, there is a hype in the media throughout the Western world, and more and more people who are trans decide to come out. According to the latest study that I published, evaluating the effect um, and outcome of vaginoplasty surgical technique that I applied in several years now, we report a complication rate of 3% which is over 10 times less as compared to some big studies published throughout the literature some years ago. So with another words, this complex surgery is getting progressively safer, and the post-op protocols are shorter and simpler. So as a matter of fact, the surgery takes around four to five hours, and patients are kept in the hospital for six days. Some years ago, we were still keeping the patients in the hospital for over two weeks. Nowadays, two weeks after the surgery, they sit on the plane, they fly back to another continent, back home. So, we made a significant progress, the surgeons and the criminologists, psychiatrists, psychologists and other disciplines working together in the quality of treatment as compared to a decade ago. However, the chief challenge, in my opinion, still remains a lack of transparency concerning different surgical techniques provided by different surgeons around the world. In fact, most of the surgeons still do not publish about their practice and their results, and as a matter of fact, there's still up to date no standardized surgical technique for vaginoplasty, which is surprising because most of the procedures and the operations around the world have been standardized. This means that if you're in the real need of that knee surgery that I was referring to at the beginning, you'll probably get comparable approach, medical materials used and techniques that have been in Switzerland, in South Korea, or in Brazil. That's not the case if you're a trans woman in the need of vaginoplasty. Because vaginoplasty, in fact, can be performed by plastic surgeons, by gynecologists, or by urologists. And it makes it extremely difficult for patients to understand and to choose their ideal approach. So I believe us, the healthcare providers, are obliged to offer more scientific insight about our practice and about our results. My youngest patient was a 17-year-old Swiss girl, and my eldest was 82-year-old American woman. Obviously, not everyone needs the same surgical treatment. So for the 17-year-old, the breast enhancement and vaginoplasty was important, whereas 82-year-old needed and desired a facial feminization, because for her it was important to be recognized and addressed in the public as a woman. So the therapy is becoming progressively personalized and individually assessed. However, all of them want one thing, one same thing, and that's the quality of life. They want to live a normal life in a body they can relate with. They want to stop pretending and stop hiding and stop fighting pretty much against everything. One self, society, church, family, friends, and so on. They want to feel good about themselves and have a healthy auto-esteem. I believe that the vast majority of you today in the audience would agree with me how important and how indispensable the role of plastic surgery is in, let's say, treatment of heavy burn patients. I'm not entirely sure the same amount of people would agree with me and share this perspective in regards of gender dysphoria. Because gender dysphoria is something we cannot see or feel or touch or understand unless oneself or someone very, very close to is involved. And I cannot speak on behalf of transgender community, as I'm not trans myself, but I can assure you there are still way too many heartbreaking stories out there, unnecessary suffering and prejudice. I do hope I could offer you today a little insight about my work and about my patients. Thank you very much. <laughs>